This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. For those of you who love having sports on during work, today is going to be a glorious day for you because, of course, the PGA Championship is teeing off right now, but also four separate baseball games throughout the day for today. We're going to talk about some bets you can sprinkle in across those four MLB games. Also talk about the two games coming up tonight and break down some NASCAR in North Wilkesboro for what should be a fun weekend. Let's dive on in now and get you ready for what should be a fun Thursday. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire here to break down today's MLB slate and also talk about NASCAR at North Wilkesboro. We'll dive on into all that here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Our Preakness Stakes podcast with Christina Blacker is up now, breaking down Christina's thoughts on this year's field, her thoughts on whether Mage can get the second leg of the Triple Crown, and also her favorite win bet for Pimlico on Saturday. To get that, check out the Vandal YouTube page or check out the Cover in the Spread podcast feed. If you like what you hear, leave us a thumbs up on YouTube or leave us a five-star rating over on Apple Podcasts. The second leg of horse racing's big three is here, and FanDuel is the best place to bet the Preakness stakes. Because right now, all customers can get a no-sweat Preakness bet up to $20. That means you'll get up to $20 back if your win bet doesn't win. Bet the Preakness with America's number one sportsbook. Just visit racing.fanduel.com for your chance to get a no-sweat Preakness bet up to $20 this Saturday. That's racing.fanduel.com. Age and residency restrictions apply. Offer valid on first win wager. Refund issued is non-withdrawable racing site credit that expires on June 12th, 2023. Restrictions apply. See terms at racing.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Let's dive on in now to the MLB slate for today because it does kick off here in pretty in pretty short order. There are just four games in the day for today. So again, want to go through those and outline some spots where you could potentially get some value uh, for your daytime viewing. Starting with the early slate, I do like a couple of bets in the first game on the slate. That is the Orioles and the Angels. I like the Orioles' money line. It is now minus 156. It was minus 146 earlier on today, but still think there's value in that number. And then the other one is Tyler Anderson. Uh, You can get him under four and a half strikeouts. That is currently at minus 108 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. If you want to pair those together via a same-game parlay, that is plus 174 right now. Don't mind that. Again, not a huge same-game parlay guy, but... I think the odds on that one actually are pretty enticing. Let's start things off here by breaking down the money line for the Orioles. I've got their win odds for today at 64.7%. So the implied odds at minus 156, 60.9%, still a big enough wiggle room there for me to feel good about the Orioles here. The Angels starting Tyler Anderson, who again, we're talking about the strikeout department and he's been trying to rekindle last year's magic that he had uh, with the Dodgers and He has been getting better results his past four games. He's been cutting back on his four-seam fastball, throwing more cutters, I believe change-ups as well. And the results have been better, but the underlying number is still pretty rough in that sample. Across those four starts, Anderson has a 5.72 skill interactive ERA. His strikeout rate very low in that time too, which we'll talk about with the strikeout prop here in one second. He's facing the Orioles. Their active roster has a 126 WRC plus against lefties since the start of last year. So when you add in that Tyler Wells on the opposing side actually has pretty good underlying numbers, I think that having confidence in the Orioles here does make a lot of sense. It is a bummer that has shifted to minus 156. I still think there is value in that number. So to me, the Orioles a good bet for today to win this game on the money line minus 156 of FanDuel Sportsbook. As always, the caveat is shop around to see if you can get a minus 146 or better still out there for them. But again, my number here, 64.7% on the Orioles. As far as Anderson specifically, he has been getting a bit better recently. Look at the game logs from a strikeout perspective. He has games of six and seven strikeouts across his past three games, which is interesting, especially with the number being decently low here at four and a half. But one of those high strikeout games came against the Brewers, who whiff like it's their job against lefties. So you can kind of discount that one. 
And the other one, a six strikeout game. He had one strikeout in the other two games with this new approach that he's had here. So I don't think he's fully, fully back yet. And when you pair that with the fact that um, he's facing an Orioles active roster with a 20.7% strikeout rate against lefties this year, it's not a great matchup. He is on the road here. I expect the Orioles to do some damage with their bats. So there are multiple paths to an under here. He could just be a low strikeout guy as he's been for most of this year and was for last year as well. Or he could get knocked around by a very potent Orioles offense and get chased in this game. I think when you have two paths to an under, that's something I want to take at minus 108. Uh, so again, Anderson under four and a half strikeouts, minus 108 at FanDuel Sportsbook. The Orioles money line is minus 156. Pretty good bets. And if you want to tie them together in the same game parlay, Odds on that are plus 176 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Not totally opposed to that, but again, prefer route is to go with individual bets personally. Another strikeout prop I like here on this early slate is in the Mets game. The Mets taking on the Tampa Bay Rays for today, and obviously that's a tough matchup, and that does play into the handicap here. I like Tyler McGill, under four and a half strikeouts, currently plus 116 at FanDuel Sportsbook. McGill... So far this year has struggled to get both strikeouts and whiffs. Um, it's we're still at the point in the year where you can see guys getting more swinging strikes than you would think based on their strikeout rate, which could imply they're due for positive regression. That's not really the case with McGill. His swinging strike rate is 8.9 percent with a 17.3 percent strikeout rate. As a result of those numbers, McGill has gone over four and a half strikeouts just once so far this year. That was back on April 1st, so his first start this year. A's active roster has a 20 or the Rays active roster has a 21.8% strike air rate against righties. And similar to the Orioles, they are a threat to chase a pitcher early because they are so potent across the board. When you combine how good the Rays are, the fact that they are a low strikeout team with the fact that McGill, not a big strikeout guy as of right now, I have McGill projected for 3.9 strikeouts. I think that makes the under a pretty easy call here. So McGill under four and a half strikeouts plus 116 at FanDuel Sportsbook. I think there's good value in that number. Again, similar to Anderson, multiple paths to the under hitting. And that to me is a uh, an attractive thing with a bet. So McGill under four and a half, 116 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Final strikeout prop I like for today is going to be on Trevor Williams. He's facing off with the Marlins, and the Marlins not a great offense, which is good for strikeout props because it should allow the guy to get deeper in the game. The problem is, with Jazz Chisholm out from this game, the Marlins are a lower strikeout team than they otherwise are. So I like Williams under four and a half strikeouts at minus 146 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. I have Williams projected for 3.5 strikeouts, so well below the five he'd need to hit the over here. Williams has hit five strikeouts just once all year. And, you know, it's worth noting that was in his most recent start because his most his most recent full start, uh, start after that was a post or a suspension due to uh weather. But it's not as if we're seeing Williams trend up here in the strikeout or pitch count department. He just happened to have uh five strikeouts in that one game. So the Smallins offense. They're obviously not good, and they do lose their best bat with Jazz Chisholm being out, but they also lose one of their highest strikeout bats. So when you remove Jazz Chisholm from the active roster, they have a 21.2% strikeout rate against righties. So they become a lower strikeout team. They become a worse team. So the odds that Williams goes deep in this game are still decently high, but will he get strikeouts while going deep? That's where I run into some issues uh, being super high in this situation. So to me, Williams under four and a half strikeouts, minus 146. I think that makes a lot of sense and a spot in one to go. So again, the bets I like on the early slate are the Orioles money line at minus 156. Tyler Anderson under uh, four and a half strikeouts at minus 108. Tyler McGill under four and a half strikeouts, plus 116. And then Trevor Williams under four and a half strikeouts, minus 146. Clearly, I am pessimistic for today, taking all unders on those uh, three strikeout props. As far as the night games go, the one number I like the most is the Cardinals money line at plus 128 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. They're taking on the Dodgers. And this pitching matchup here, it's Julio Rios, who is pitching very well against Adam Wainwright, who just came off the IL, struggled in his rehab stint, and has struggled so far at two starts in the majors. So that may make you ask, why on earth would I want to bet the, the, the Cardinals money line here against the Dodgers? I think it's kind of 
baked into the number pretty fully. And as a result, even if I account for Wainwright struggling, Arias being very good, stuff like that, I still have the Cardinals win odds at 47.8%. The implied odds here, uh, 44%. Wainwright, again, I'm not super high on him based on what I've seen so far, but I think this could be a situation where people see the names of Castillo, or that they see Urias, they see Wainwright, and realize Wainwright hasn't been having it so far, and maybe they just kind of be high in the Dodgers. So plus 128, again, 44% implied odds, either at 47%. The Dodgers deserve to be favored in this game, despite the fact it is on the road, and this bet will hit less than 50% of the time if my numbers are correct. But... I do still think that uh, we can find some value in the Cardinals here. So of the night games, favorite bet for me is the Cardinals money line at plus 128. I would give some thought to the the Blue Jays money line at minus 130 if we got news that Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is going to play. I don't think he will based on the report that we got. But let's say hypothetically we get to four o'clock. The Blue Jays lineup comes out and Vlad is in there and the money line is still minus 130. If all those things happen, I would be okay taking the Jays because I have some value there if I assume Vlad is in. If I take him out, though, it's less so. So keep an eye on the Jays lineup. If we get Vlad in there, I think that minus 130, a very fair number for them. I don't think he'll play, which is why I'm I'm staying away from that for right now. But I would check that out later on. Uh, Cardinals money line at plus 128, the bet I like later on. So hopefully that gets you some some good bets for today across Major League Baseball as you're uh, watching during work, hopefully stealthily. uh, But I think it should set us up for a fun day of baseball. Let's talk now about some NASCAR because I think it's a pretty fun weekend in the NASCAR side of things. They're at North Wilkesboro, and this is the first time that the NASCAR Cup Series has raced here since 1996, which was before I was a NASCAR fan. I started watching in 1999, so I've never seen a race in North Wilkesboro. But we can still handicap this race because we know exactly what to expect here in terms of archetype, and that to me is the biggest thing. What kind of bucket does this track fit into? And for North Wilkes- Wilkesboro, it is a short track, about 0.6 miles. It is a flat track in terms of the banking. There's actually some weird elevation changes, which are kind of fun. Um, but then it's also the key characteristic here is that there is a lot of tire fall off. And that, to me, is the defining characteristic of this track. And it's going to be the defining characteristic that I use when trying to bet the NASCAR All-Star race. For those of you who do not uh, know about the NASCAR All-Star Race, having a write-up on the uh, format for this year, they're going to set the starting order for the heat races on Friday. They're going to have a pit crew competition, which will set the starting order for the heat races. There'll be two separate heat races, and the heat races will be similar to, if you remember Daytona, the dual races, where one dual race at the inside row, one dual race at the outside row, and that's how they set the field for the race. So... That'll be the way the starting order is set. And then also uh, during the race, it's actually a pretty straightforward format where they'll have a like a halftime break, 100 laps in, but it's a 200 lap race. There are no like weird inverts or anything like that. That means relative to other all-star races, I believe this one is probably easier to handicap than others, even though it is taking place at a track we have not seen again since I was five years old. So I actually think this one is pretty easy to handicap. What's interesting about that, though, is that I believe bookmakers are viewing this as being a unpredictable race because you look at Kyle Larson. Uh, he is a favorite now, right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. He is seven to one. And Larson has been, you know, six, five to one or so the past couple of weeks. So you are getting a discount there, even though the field is smaller. There will be 24 cars in this field after the open qualifiers advance to this race. And I have dummy uh, cars in there in my model. Basically, the three best cars in the open race are in my model uh, for the all-star race to kind of give me some uh, cover in case the worst case scenario happens and the three strongest cars advance. I want to know, okay, worst case scenario, what will Kyle Larson's win odds be for this race? And when I run my model, I show value on a couple guys. Now, when I was taking notes on uh, preparing my notes for today last night, I thought I'd be on William Byron because he was 10 to one at the time at FanDuel Sportsbook. I thought that was a great number, was willing to take that. Overnight, he shortened to plus 750, which could be a bummer. That could be a bummer because it means that Byron, I don't believe, is any longer a value for me uh, at 10 to one. No, he is uh, or 750. So he's no longer a value for me there. However, FanDuel 
as a good book bookmaker would do, lengthened odds of other drivers in order to account for the fact that Byron's odds were shortening. They weren't just increasing the hold on you. So a couple drivers lengthened. One of those drivers was Kyle Larson, out to seven to one. I think that even with a lot of uncertainty and even with practice to come on Friday, uh, the heat races, I want to take the seven to one right now on Kyle Larson. The implied odds, uh, seven to one for Larson, 12.5%. I am at, at uh, 14.2%. So almost two percentage points of edge on Larson, which means even if things don't go perfectly for him in the pick crew competition or in practice on Friday, the odds that I'm still showing value are pretty high. The reason my numbers love Larson is he is very good on slick tracks. That's kind of how I view tracks that are like this, where the tire fall off is so great. He comes from a dirt racing background, which means when the car gets tougher to handle, Larson will be very much okay. We saw him have a great car in Darlington, as he always does. Great car. He's always great in Homestead, which is another track with a lot of tire fall off. Runs well in Fontana. He had a good race in Richmond this year, even though it's not traditionally been his best track. Definitely not a bad track for him, but uh, shown improvement there. So basically every track with a lot of tire fall off is one where Larson is a threat to win. He also did win in Martins, though, which is another short flat track if you want to skew more that direction for this race. So Larson has had terrible luck so far this year. He's still won, I think, twice, uh, despite his awful luck. He could have realistically five wins already so far this year. So getting him at seven to one here, I think, is a gift, and it's a gift that I want to take. So to me, right now, Kyle Larson seven to one, a good value, and it's a nice way to um, make up for the fact we couldn't get uh, William Byron at ten to one. Larson is one of the guys whose odds lengthened. He was uh, plus 650. He lengthened to 7-1. to one. The other guy who lengthened is also now a value for me. And that guy is Ross Chastain at 14-1 to one at FanDuel Sportsbook. And I was going to take Chastain to podium in this race. He was 3-1. to one. He's actually still 3-1 to one to podium. But now that he's gone from 12-1 to one to 14-1 to one to win, I'm going to take that. That pushes him, his implied odds to win down to 6.7%. I have Chastain winning 10.5% of the time. That's a huge gap. And the reason that my numbers are high on Chastain is that he had a good car in Darlington. Obviously, he and uh, Larson decided to uh, tangle toward the end, so it did not pay off. And Chastain has not won since Talladega last year. He's not won on a, an oval, non, non-drafting track ever in the Cup Series. So... Maybe I'm dumb being as high on him, but he was also good beyond Darlington and Richmond and Fontana as well. I think he's probably going to be starting off pretty high in the heat race because his pit crew is among the best in the sport right now. So the pit crew competition Friday night should put him in a good spot for the heat race. Should be able to maintain track position there. I think that this number is too good to pass up. So if I were forced to pick, between betting Chastain at 14 to one and Larson at seven to one, I would pick Chastain at 14 to one because I think the odds is the odds, his odds get longer are pretty low. Larson might, I doubt it, but like he might, whereas Chastain, I don't think that's going to happen. So to me for the all-star race, the main event on uh Sunday night, I like Kyle Larson, seven to one Ross Chastain, 14 to one. If you can still get Byron 10 to one, which I doubt I would take that, but uh, based on the current FanDuel odds, Larson and Chastain are the first bets. Now, FanDuel also does have odds up for the All-Star Open race, and I do show value right now in Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs is plus 360 to win at FanDuel Sportsbook. I have Ty at 25% to win uh, the All-Star Open, which might seem like a lot, but it's a Joe Gibbs racing car. Gibbs has showed a lot of speed recently, not a ton of great competition in this event. Uh, Josh Berry is there, and Josh Berry is well suited for this track, I would think, and he's in the Hendrick car, but I prefer, I think Gibbs is better personally. So I do show value in Gibbs. The reason I'm not taking it at plus 360 is because the pick crew competition will set the starting order for this race. And unlike the all-star main event, there are no heat races for the open, which means if Gibbs's team has an issue in the qualifying or in the pick crew competition, he's going to start in the back. If Kevin Harvick messes up, his team messes up in the, in the picker competition, he can make up for that in the heat race on Saturday. There is no safety net here for the open drivers. So I don't think Gibbs's odds will get shorter should his team be fast in the picker competition. Let's say he starts first. He's probably still going to be roughly plus 360, but the downside here is pretty big. So 
if you need a reference point in terms of uh, betting Gibbs later on, I have his win odds at 25.6%. He is 52.5% to podium and 50, 41% to advance via finishing first or second, not via the fan vote. Not that he'd win that anyway, but if you can find markets available, uh, 41% to race his way in, 52.5% to podium, 25.6% to win based on my numbers uh, for Ty Gibbs in the open race. He is the one guy I'm primarily focused on. Michael McDowell is a slight value for me. He is at 16 to 1. We'd rather wait till we get uh, the numbers from practice uh, on Friday before diving into him. So. I think Gibbs is a guy I'll probably bet. I've not done so yet, but I would bet that I will wind up there at some point. I just want to wait until after the picker competition in case things go poorly there to safeguard myself. We also have the truck series racing here on Saturday at North Wilkesboro, and this field is disgusting. It has Kyle Larson. It has Ross Chastain. It has Bubba Wallace. It has William Byron. Christopher Bell, all on top of the truck series regulars. So this field is absolutely loaded, which means the odds are flatter than usual for the top end guys. So we have to account for that when we're trying to decide which guys we want to bet. And even with the field being loaded, I'm still showing value in Christopher Bell at six to one to win this race. And I'm willing to take that uh, on Bell. Bell six to one, Byron plus 350, Larson plus 270. And the interesting thing for me is that I view Larson and Bell as being in somewhat similar equipment. Bell's driving for Hattori, one of the uh, Toyota teams over in the truck series. Tyler Ankrum, the primary guy there. And Ankrum is a guy I've bet a couple times this year. I think that he's actually okay. So a decent equipment prior on Hattori. It's not great. It's not KBM, which Byron is in. Um, but I'm not sure what to think about Spire because... They've had good races like last year at Martinsville. William Byron is in the Spire truck, started dead last with no practice, no qualifying and won the race. But outside of that, they haven't had any like pop pop performances. So I'm a little bit lower on Larson's equipment, I think, than the books are when they have him at plus 270. And I view him as being in somewhat equal equipment to Bell, but the betting odds skew pretty heavily towards Larson. As for Byron, I do have him as a favorite for this race in the KBM truck because is, that is the best team in the series. Byron's win odds for me, 24.5%. His implied odds are 22.2%. So he has a value based on my numbers, but Bell is a bigger value at 17.1% to win versus the implied odds at 14.3%. The reason it's high in Bell is because he is tremendous on slick track, similar to Larson has that dirt racing background and... He's great on short flat tracks, which is, again, where North Wilkesboro falls into. You look at his Xfinity Series record at New Hampshire, Richmond, Phoenix, stuff like that. He has been phenomenal. And in the Cup Series, we've seen that translate to a lesser extent as well. So you put Bell down the truck series, put his odds at 6-1. to one, I think that's pretty enticing. So I will take Bell 6-1 to one to win the truck series race. Uh, I think that's the best bet as of right now. Value on on Byron, but not quite there as of right now. As far as other bets I like in the Truck Series race, no other outrights. I want to take at FanDuel Sportsbook, but looking elsewhere, you can get some top five bets. Uh, I have, like Ross Chastain plus two twenty five and Stuart Friesen at four to one. This is, I think, the third straight week we've been on Friesen, uh, but it's worked out so far. He finished runner up last week to cash uh, at four to one. His implied odds are twenty percent. I have Friesen at twenty two point four percent. So it's not a huge value, but I like his talent, like uh, his skill a lot, especially on slick tracks. He has a dirt racing background. Again, I kind of like that a lot at this uh, kind of track. As for Chastain, things have not gone well for him so far in the Nice racing trucks, but a lot of it's been equipment related or uh, been, you know, attrition related. I still think that he's good enough to win in this equipment. So I actually have Chastain at 44% to finish top five. Uh, he's again, he's plus 225 to uh, finish there at, at uh, other books. I doubt there are 31%. So I'm well above market on Chastain as I have been several times so far this year, but I think I'm okay with that. He might not be able to beat Byron bell and Larson, but I think he can get a top five, especially when his odds are plus 225. So bets of the truck series, Bell to win six to one, Chastain top five, plus 225, Friesen top five, four to one. Then also taking uh, Larson to win the all-star main event at seven to one, Chastain to win at 14 to one, and monitoring Ty Gibbs likely taking him, but I want to wait till post pick crew competition before doing so.
That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Again, should be a pretty fun day. Checking out the PGA Championship, watching some baseball, and then uh, watching NASCAR for tomorrow. I can always get on board with that kind of work day. Do not forget to subscribe to the Covering the Spread podcast feed and check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page to get the Preakness Stakes podcast with Christina Blacker getting her read on this year's field. If you got questions for me, I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB bets for today. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs>